This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Easter and welcome to Luther Memorial Church. Church members, as you can tell, we're in the sanctuary, and I know it's been a long time since we've been in here as we're under construction. In fact, during our service, you might hear trucks going on um, because that, the contractors are working outside our windows even right now as we speak. So that's just part of the work that God is doing at this place, and God is never done finishing his work. In fact, that's what Easter is about. And so we're going to begin our service today, and we're going to say that familiar Easter acclamation. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. gospel reading comes from the 28th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy 
and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. As you can see right now, our church is under construction. And it's very much a metaphor for our own lives. Our lives are messy. We fall short of the glory of God. We need someone to save us, someone to put us back together. And so before I go any further and preach the sermon, I'd like to give you the absolution. So listen to the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I know it doesn't feel like Easter for you. It really doesn't feel like Easter for me. I've never preached before with a construction uh, going on outside the building, even though I have preached with the, some crying babies, so that does happen. But it doesn't feel like Easter, and because of that, there's so much that I miss. I miss the Easter breakfast. I miss the Easter egg hunt. I miss the colorful outfits. I miss seeing all of you. I miss you very much. It does not feel like Easter. But maybe that's the point. For those women who went to the tomb on that first Easter, it didn't feel like Easter for them. Their lives had been turned upside down. Everything that they knew to be true was, was wrong. They were grieving, they were hurting, they were sad. The smell of death was in the air. And they came to the tomb with the hope of just simply putting ointment on Jesus' body to care for the dead. Listen again, listen again to how Matthew's reading begins. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Could you imagine? They're going to see the tomb. They're going to see a dead Jesus. And you have to understand that what happened the day before was the Sabbath. And that's where they celebrated, actually celebrated, the Passover. And so the Passover was a time when they were reminded that God sent a champion in Moses to deliver the people out of Egypt, and that God, with an outstretched hand, led his people through a hard moment into the Promised Land. And I imagine for the women, they must have thought that's what Jesus was doing. But then Jesus died. He was crucified. He was humiliated. He was declared guilty. And God didn't show up. There were no seas that were parted. And so they must have thought that the world didn't make sense, that God didn't make sense. Everything that they put their hope in, their faith in, had been wrong. That's how they came to the tomb on that first day. I can't help but think about how many of us are coming to Easter morning on this day. Our world has been turned upside down. Our lives have been turned upside down. We don't know how to go forward. For those who are sick, they're hoping for some kind of miracle. For those who've lost a loved one, they're asking hard questions. For those who've lost a job, they don't know what's next. We are a people who are supposed to have faith. But on this Easter, it's so hard to have faith. For us, just like those early women, those disciples, our lives feel like there's a giant stone that's been rolled, shutting us off from God's blessing. And instead, we have no access to God at this time. COVID-19 feels too big to overcome. For the women who approached the tomb, they knew that there was a large stone blocking their way to Jesus. 
for them, the most that they could hope for was that someone would have mercy and unroll the tomb. But what they got instead was the miraculous. Listen again to verse 2 and following. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him. This is my message for you. Talk about an Easter moment. Here they were just hoping to see a dead Jesus, and instead they saw a miraculous, a miracle. There was a, the earth shook, and they saw an angel, and the angel who's a messenger came and delivered a great word. And the first thing out of the angel's mouth was, do not be afraid. Did you hear that word? Do not be afraid. That's what the angel saying to us today. Do not be be afraid because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He wants you to know that this day. God wants you to know that this day. As much as you have fear and we all have fear, do not be afraid. But then the angel continues. He said, Jesus is not here. He is raised. In other words, Jesus is greater than death. Jesus overcomes the grave. Jesus will overcome any kind of hardship that we find ourselves in. In fact, in the book of Revelation, it says that Jesus, who's the beginning and the end, holds the keys to Hades. In other words, if you find yourself in the grave, he has the keys to get you out. Isn't that a word we need to hear today? That in the midst of whatever death we find ourselves in, he has the, te the keys to get us out. And yet the angel isn't done speaking. He then says, tell the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. Because he wants them to go and tell the whole world that Jesus Christ is greater than the grave. That Jesus Christ overcomes all fear, all death. I think that's something we need to hear. Because the miracle of Easter is not a lily. The miracle of Easter is not hearing a trumpet sound. The, the miracle of Easter is not a pancake breakfast. The miracle of Easter is that God sent his son and his son overcame the grave for you and for me. You see, before Jesus, Rome had all the power. But after Jesus, the guards were frozen with fear because they knew someone had more power than Rome. Before Jesus, the graveyard is a graveyard. But after Jesus, the graveyard is a garden. Before Jesus, death is death. After Jesus, death is sleep. Because there is a future after Jesus for you and for me. Jesus changes everything. In fact, reflecting on the resurrection, John Christenstum in, in somewhere around the A.D. 400, wrote these words. O death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you are overthrown. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life reigns. Did you hear those words? Life reigns. And even though right now it feels like death reigns, no, the miracle of Easter is that COVID-19 does not reign. Jesus Christ reigns. He is greater than death. He is greater than disease. He is greater than despair. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And yet, I would love to end here, but I can't. Because the story of Easter never, it did not end on Easter morning. It continues even to this day. Because the women, it says in verse 8, they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. 
and ran to tell his disciples. You see, they left the tomb to tell the world, and of course there was fear. Why? Because a life of faith is hard, and we have disappointments, and we struggle. And so there is fear. They had fear after the resurrection. But they also had joy. Joy knowing that their future was secure. Joy knowing that they were doing God's work. Joy seeing God's people come to faith in Jesus. Joy knowing that lives would be changed. That's the miracle of Easter. Jesus Christ reigns. And I want to end with this last thought. As I walked into church this morning to record the service, the contractors down below said, hey, we found this bulletin in the rafters. And this bulletin, if you can look, it, it's Jesus riding on the donkey from Palm Sunday. And in it, it's the service from Luther Memorial's Palm Sunday service, April 3rd, 1966. So that's 54 years ago. The world's changed a lot in 54 years. But what did they do? They had a procession of faith. They, they sang hymns. They said the creed and the Lord's Prayer. They had all of this. They, the last hymn was, Lead on, O King Eternal. All of that. But then on the very back of this bulletin, there's this little description for us, for the people who have this bulletin. And it says, part of God's plan. Let me just read this kind of as we're closing. It says this, it says, century after century, God's plan developed. Covenants were made with individuals and nations. Promises were given. At last, in accordance with his plan, God sent his son to earth. The entrance into Jerusalem was part of the plan, a preview of the coming triumph, a revelation of God's love in the per person of Jesus, the promised Messiah. Even the shouts of the people were the result of years of preparation. Centuries of yearning for salvation burst from their mouths as the people cried, Hosanna, save us, Lord. Their prayers were answered on Good Friday and Easter when Christ's triumph was complete. Now these last words. We are also part of God's plan. Christ has triumphed over sin and death for us, for you and for me. May we proclaim our gratitude with our lives as well with our lips. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I face to 
time of transition to invite different families into the church to share and uh, to proclaim the Apostles Creed together and today I'm blessed to have my family and my beautiful wife and daughters so together let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their need. Holy and gracious God, we thank and praise you on this Easter Sunday that your son Jesus Christ is greater than the grave. Remind us of that truth, that because he wins, we too will win. Because he lives, we live. Impress this truth upon our minds and our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church on earth as it's learning how to do church in new ways. O oh Lord, give inspiration and innovation to your, to your pastors and church members in how to proclaim a message that does not change, the message of your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, for the leaders of our country, as well as the leaders of the world. We ask that this would be a time that would help them lead well, and that for people to draw nearer to each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially on this day for health workers, 
for scientists and researchers, for nurses and doctors, be with them and their families as they, they work tirelessly trying to find solutions as well as trying to care for the sick and dying. We pray also for all those who are caregivers. Watch over them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, and we bring before you the names of those who weigh heavily on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, gracious God, watch over our children, our grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren. Be near them. Bless them. Keep them. As they might be afraid of what's going on or unable to process all that's happening, remind them that they are loved, that you love them, that their parents and their aunts and uncles and their family members love them. Watch over them, gracious God. As we pray these things, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>